Hey guys, welcome to the final episode of this sort of three part series on engine out work. So in this one, we're gonna be doing the timing belt, the tensioner, the water pump, and all the pulleys on the timing side of the engine. And then on the other side, we're gonna be doing the cam chain, the cam chain tensioner, the high pressure fuel pump follower, a few other gaskets and a few other little bits and pieces on the, on the cam cap of the engine. Let's get into it. Not bad. And I soon found out you do not need to undo the crank bolt at all. All right, just normal tensioner comes off next. There is six in there. We should have this come off. There we go. We'll move on to these. There is actually a timing mark on this plastic cover. You can see the odd little bolt hole lines up on a locating dowel in there. And then when it's all lined up, there is a very small notch on the harmonic balancer that lines up with that. There is the factory one up here, written in white there, but it is a line scribed into that um, cam pulley. So what I've done, I've marked A on the belt for the cam pulley, B on both the crank, on both the pulley and on the belt. Okay, before you can release the tensioner, you've got to release this 13 mil nut here. I already have it. Without that loose, the tensioner will not be able to untension. These idler pulleys, they're all coming off too because they're being replaced. Will this make a mess? I hope not. <laughs> so as with the clutch, I don't like to mix and match brands that are going to be interacting with each other. So everything that I bought was SKF. It's got a new belt out of the box and it's kind of a trick I've always used. Some other people do it, I see. Put a few bits of tape around the belt. Make sure all the teeth are lining up. Just do a final alignment check of these teeth. So fitted like that. So the old one is stretched slightly, just about a mil out, but the tooth count is right. So I failed to record this little bit very well, but what we've done here is with the belts taped together and lined up with that white pen, we've transferred the A and B marks from the old belt off onto the new belt on the same corresponding teeth. So we've got the same markings now on the new belt. It's confirming we've got A and B. Okay, a little bit of this Loctite on the O-ring. So when I say I'm using Loctite, I'm not talking about thread locker. I'm talking about this, the anaerobic sealant. I used to work for a mob that operated these big compressed carbon dioxide pumps. And we found that when you applied this to the rubber O-rings, they had a longer lifespan. So I've always used this on any rubber gasket or seal. Also a little bit of Loctite on the water pump bolts. Next up is our tensioner. And finally, the timing belt itself. So as you put your tensioner on, you have to make sure that this tab sits in this Welsh plug here. And I've found that mine previously had not. In fact, it was spinning around and it was up there hitting that. So whoever did it, 
assume that it went under there. So once that's in there, as you rotate this to tension it, you will notice there's a little blue tab there that moves around and lines up with a notch. Once it's lined up there, it's tensioned. Obviously, once you have that little tab lined up, you torque this nut up and that locks it into place. I think we're good. Lines up. Lines up. Now we'll do a few rotations and make sure it stays in line. Just on the slight chance that the last guy that did this messed this up, I just want to be totally sure. So there's our line marks. We've got a dial gauge in cylinder one. We watch the dial. Right there. And we are in line. So the Allen drive bolts that hold the harmonic balancer on, as you can see, they have Loctite on them from the factory. So definitely plenty of Loctite going on these. Next in our site is the cam chain and the fuel pump lifter. A few ways to get the assembly off. I'm gonna remove this stainless steel hard line and cover. So these have to come off. It definitely is a bit that needs to be moved aside for this assembly to come off. Basically this whole loom. Now we've got good access to it. So next up, our high pressure fuel pump is gonna come off. So we've got this one hard line on the bottom. Could be a little bit of fuel. I've done a video on this before, but to take the high pressure fuel pump off, two plugs, one main high pressure line, there's a rubber low high pressure line down there, and you need to take out the plug that's in here to get to this screw, and there's just the three of them. Once it's out, out comes our follower. It's always interesting to have a look at these, and I can tell you, this aftermarket one, this has more wear on it than the original genuine one had on it. So, genuine only. Okay, with all that removed, ready to start removing this, uh, this end casing. And it's just about 12, 12 uh, Torx drives. Okay, all those bolts out and this is loose. Bit of oil behind it. There we are, there's our assembly. Here's our tensioner. The guides look to be in really good order. They're not snapped or anything. There's plenty of tension on the chain. The tensioner seems to be working as it should. First thing in this whole job that I've found that's not quite right or not ideal, um, a couple of these O-rings here, uh, one's missing and one was broken and floating around in here. One is still there though. They're all a bit snapped. So I think that more likely saps a bit of power as opposed to bird's oil, because that's all part of the, the VVT. All right, so next up, we're gonna pull the valve cover off. So I've got 10 torques across the top of it. There's a couple on the end as well on the timing cover that hold it on. Couple of vacuum lines, couple of um, PCB lines. Always a good show of an engine's health. And this engine looks really healthy for 240,000 Ks. Okay, so I've finally accumulated all our bits and pieces to do the cam chain. Um, it is an involved job and there's a lot of random bits you need to source from random places. In terms of gaskets and seals, um, I buy genuine wherever I can and where it's not absorbently expensive. We're replacing the fuel cam follower, bought a genuine one of those. The actual cam, uh, cam sprocket, cam sprocket bolts, we bought one of those. High pressure fuel pump o-ring, got a genuine one. And the actual front cover gasket, got a genuine one of those as well. In terms of the other gaskets, the oil control rings, 
that sit inside this, mine were perished as we saw. They wanted $80 per O-ring. There was three of them. So I, I just said no. I went for L-ring. The same for the valve cover gasket. $140 they wanted. So L-ring's a good brand. We've gone for aftermarket for them. In terms of the actual timing chain and tensioner kit, again, genuine. To get it shipped here in Australia, they wanted $1,000. So the brand I went with is INA. It looks pretty good. But they're an established brand, so I'm going to trust them. In terms of the, the cam locking kit, which you do need, 40 bucks off eBay. So we'll see how well that goes. And then actually our... Um, cam bolt drives read a bit of conflicting information someone said it's an m8 others said it's an m10 um, the name of these is called a ribe drive i bought these from total tools i bought both they're in about eight dollars each so we'll see which one fits all right let's see how well our cam lock fits so i've got the engine right at top dead center It's a bit tight. Okay, jiggling the bolt, rotating a little bit. It's sat down in there nicely. It's it's good actually, it's tight, it's nice and snug. So I have confidence in that. Okay, so I came with some little bolts that hold it down. I don't think they'll do much, but anyway. So it does seem to be the M10 rod drive in here. It is a bit tight but I think that's better than it being slack. That in, make sure it's truly seated. Did not like the feeling of that at all. Yep. Absolutely useless. We now have a new and improved cam locking mechanism. All right, new day, take two. <clears throat> Rounded off the bolt. Fuck. So you're gonna have to drill this bolt out. Now you can't get any swarf inside those little holes. They have to be really clean. So we're gonna shield them with a bit of tape. Okay, like that. Doing it in two halves worked well. All right, so we're gonna drill out that bolt with a, I think it's 11.5 or a 12 mil bit. Okay, so I actually drilled it out even larger. I put, an M, I put a half inch drill bit in it and now I've smashed an M14 triple star drive into it. <sighs> maybe, maybe they've got it. Ha ha! So there you go. M14 triple star drive. Just get it to focus. Smashed into the end of a half inch hole. All right, that out. And go on to pulling this off. Next up is our tensioner bolts. So if a cam chain has wear from when it's new, it will have a lot of play when turned on its side like this. I would say that's excessive. Just compared to the new one. It should have a little bit, but much tighter. If you look at the new cam chain now, there's a few ways to get the timing of this right. Uh, there's a guy called Decimal Tenths, another YouTube channel. I think his method is really simple and really good, uh, better than the factory one. So he says, count 18 and 19 links to the left of the brass link, starting at this one. So one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So we'll give it all a bit of an oil bath. Okay, you can see we've got a timing mark on the back of the camera joster. And our two white links, our two marked links, you can see the mark there. They go over, over where that timing mark is. Again, as you'll need this tool, it came in that cam sprocket kit. Now there's a locating dowel that needs to go in that keyway. The brass link goes on the timing mark on this sprocket, which is just a little punched hole in it from the factory. There we go. So you need to wind it back this way, not that way. So in goes our cam bolt now. So it's 20 Newton meters. Plus 45 degrees. So not 90, just 45. That confuses things, doesn't it? <laughs> That'll do us. So we'll sneak our little oil control rings over here. And that slots on and torques down just the way it came off with a new gasket and everything. To our cam cover gasket, valve cover gasket. I always like to just give it a good coating with this. So the final step before it all goes back together before I put the cam cover on, before I put these covers back on. I'm just gonna do a few hole revolutions of it. Just confirm that these line up again. Make sure there's no foreign noises in here and that everything looks fine. If it, you've done something terribly wrong and it interferes, it's better that you feel it here than when you go and try and start it. Oh, I'm gonna fit our high pressure fuel pump now. That's getting a new cam lifter, a new fuel pump cam lifter, and it's getting a new gasket too. I'm also going to replace this with a hose, it's looking a bit sad, now's the opportunity. Just take that in a bit of engine oil. I'm just going to give this a spray with oil, not cleaner, just oil. and make sure those three torques are very very firmly clamped down I don't have a torque reading but nice and firm so after this the engine went back in the car which you saw me do in the first episode in this sort of three-part series all went back and smoothly as we saw the first thing I noticed when I started it up for the first time is the idle quality. The idle quality was night and day difference. <clears throat> we know the timing belt was right. I've done plugs on this car before, which leads me to think that that cam chain was actually so sloppy. There was so much slack in it. The cam phasing was out and it was essentially acting as if it was a cammed engine and it had a lope at idle, which I thought was normal. Apart from that, no other problems with it, and that uh, that concludes another three-part little series. Thanks for watching, guys.